Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Remember I said this was our year for doing massive amounts of hay and that we broke the baler with all that straw and hay baling that we had done? Well, there's more to come. <laughs> yeah, it's not so funny, but it's just ridiculous how much stuff is breaking because we are using it all so hard right now. So the Pittman arm runs back and forth like on a plunger type deal and they can break and get worn. Now, until we learned um, a very useful trick, you have to tighten up the bolts on the end here every time you use it. Well, he got into some thick stuff, some coarse stuff, and maybe some like wild carrot. I don't know why, but luckily we have a second sickle bar mower. We're using the John Deere 37 sickle bar mower. When we got these, they were a couple hundred dollars a piece. And right now, he found one earlier this year, I think, by Holland, Michigan for about $700. Um, just a quick search today was showing up around $1,000. So parts. Parts are expensive and it's good to have extras. So you can see the ball that it runs on. Something happened and there's a strap that's supposed to be right there on the top. And it seems to have broken and maybe that's what caused the rest of it to go but uh, there's two different part numbers one for each side you only get a half when you buy it $130 new from John Deere and it was not showing up in their parts catalog so we had to call um, we can get the 10% off uh, green mark that we found in Holland your first order online they had a coupon code that you can use he keeps calling instead of doing it which with the baler parts it would have been nice to know that ahead of time because we could have saved over a hundred dollars um, these you can pick up at tractor supply uh, they're made of oak this original one is a little beat up but he's gonna try and run it we have one well maybe he's gonna try and run it we have a spare we always keep a spare for the pitman arm um, the spare that we have has been in there for years because we learned that we had to tighten up the bolts. So there was the issue of that little top oh, piece on there also. I know we've got some sunlight issues going on here. It's that strap. Maybe that broke and caused the rest of it to crash into the ball on the end of the cutter bar. Let me turn this around and show you where it sits on it. So the pitman arm connects right here and you can see it had a little bit of a smash on there and then it goes over and connects on the side there so he is gonna swap out the parts with what we had and yeah we're just gonna keep on looking maybe for another one the other one has got great wheels on it but you know you run into issues he had broke this spring for transport last year and it was broken on the other one so we weren't able to uh, take that so he has just been um, running it without and it's okay but it would be you know nice to get that spring even if it's not John Deere through something else and a lot of times when you know like the coils per inch or something if you know where to find it let me know in the comments below because all the help we can get in saving money I'll take it because <laughs> it just all adds up um, always robbing Peter to pay Paul and it's sometimes on parts so uh, he had oh the guide <laughs> This guide here on the end was different on the other. It was more of an aftermarket kind of deal, I think. Um, he took it off of there and put it on this because I think his end piece down here in the cast had broke on the original one for this. So this has already had a lot of replacement parts on it. Um, he goes through and, you know, keeps the cutting bar. All right, so we did a little research last night and I looked on eBay and one of these rebuilt can be up to about $300 complete. And that is sometimes with a different end for, um, I think it was a Model 5. And then this one's a 37, so it doesn't have that on the end. And we saw one pictured that it kind of looked like this and they weren't showing the other side of it. And you can see that there's a bolt here. This is likely what caused a lot of our trouble, this snapping. And the one that I found on eBay was I think $115. So that's going to keep that from all ramming forward into your ball on your sickle bar. Uh, without that, you're just going to be right back in the same situation. Well, he thought, you know what, they got into a little trouble with this, but 
he's going to run it until it breaks. No point in trying to swap everything out if you don't have to. So he's just going to do a quick swap out and put this back on. And we'll get some video footage of him a little bit later on. Hopefully cutting some hay, but probably not. We got, we all got Here's some work to do. Here's the field that we're currently working on. And did he say this is second cutting? Yeah. That he never got to it before? Yeah, so this one is a lot more grass and wasn't growing as well, I think. And it's really taken off with some of that wild carrot. But he had that breakdown and he told me um, after I stopped filming that strap wasn't uh, for like a collision, you know, resistance. It's to adjust the spring somehow for getting it on and off. You know, I don't always know things and sometimes I say things wrong. It's what I do. So Trey says this is about 20 acres and this is our oldest seeding. We've had this here for several years. It was the first one that we ever put in. And I know some people like to plow things and turn them over and, and redo it. But because we do a combination of different uh, growings in there of different kinds of grasses, the alfalfa, the clover, we've never had to tear it out and reseed it. There is one spot that's really sandy right up there. We had an apple orchard for a while. Um, the electric fence failed on it and the deer came and got all of the young apple trees. So we've got to redo that. But that solar fence just didn't make it through the winter and the deer did. So maybe devise a different plan for that. If you know a better situation to keep the deer out, let me know. But otherwise we would have been better off just doing individual tree cages for that. So it's been a good hay field. We've gotten a lot of tons of hay out of it. Well then, no rain till Tuesday got bumped up to a 52% chance of rain a little bit later today. And it has been cloudy all day. They're saying six, seven o'clock. And I know I've said it before, but we've talked about it. We've researched it. They were out there putting chemtrails the last two days. And last night when we were coming home, it was pretty extreme. So they do this all over the state. It blows over. I don't know if they're trying to change the weather, make it rain in Canada or whatever, but this is unnatural. You see all the weird waves and dips. If you ever see them doing it, you can see how they kind of disperse. And I don't know how it all works, but science. <laughs> We're trying to beat the science. So we've got some rain coming. And all our field is cut with anticipation of no rain till Tuesday. And this is why we keep cows. If it ends up raining and your bales get wet, they get moldy, you got to get them fed. If you didn't have cows to feed them, you'd be stuck with a bunch of bad bales. But look at how nice this is. So this is the second cutting on this, very grassy. This is the shot I showed you from the road. The kids and I were running to town yesterday and going down to check out a beehive down at the neighbors on our way through. So this section is always really good, very thick along the edges of the woods. And then it gets a little more uphill into the sandy stuff. So originally, this is all 20 acres. He was gonna cut two or three times into different sections of this field. And usually we seem to kind of end up doing it all in one big shot over here because it works out pretty good. Right up here is the apple orchard. We'll go up there and go check so it out. So when a bale drops string side up out of the baler, we have to turn it by hand like this. Otherwise you can't pick it up with the stack wagon. This is what was our apple orchard. It lasted for about 10 months. After 10 months, yeah, not so much. We got into too many cloudy winter days and the electric fence just didn't go. If, like I said, you know a trick to keep them out, let me know because that was disappointing. A lot of time and money loss, bringing the truck up here with an IBC tote to water them in the heat, big job. He didn't have much here, he didn't rake the hill. Looks like he just turned around here and dropped this bale off. So he raked the outer edges. Looks like and just left the center. Another tip bale. So that's what I rode over to do to keep him 
on track. If I ask the kids to stop what they're doing and coming over here, when I'm gonna come anyway, it's just better. I could use the exercise anyway. Got some milkweed plants growing up there. Now on our electric fence up at the cows, we've never had problems with lost power. The only problems we've had is it being unplugged or um, yeah, basically losing contact somewhere. So this is where we had the power unit for the solar fence charger coming here. Each wire is jumped to the next. And I did think that we probably needed to add a lower um, line and just change the spacing a little bit for the smaller deer. And somewhere here, see this is the ground wire going from over there. And I believe we did three grounds. It's gotta be here somewhere. There it is. So you buy these, you know, eight, 10, 12 feet deep and you ground the heck out of it. Now with this one, we only did one. On the cow fence, we did three. And I thought we had more than one here, so maybe that was an issue. Um, I was able to return the electric charger, and they took it back, but it just seems like it should have better. Now, if I plant any more here, the fall planting trees have been coming in stock at Tractor Supply. Um, I think they were $30 a piece. And I was at Family Farm at Home the other day. They had them for $24.99. The trouble with um, one or the other or both is they weren't doing a one-year guarantee with them and with deer damage it doesn't count. So if I plant them again, I'm going to do individual cages around each one, add another line, and maybe another ground. But if you have any information on that solar fence, it was a Zareba brand, the kind they had at Tractor Supply back when. Um, that's what what we had. Oh, I gotta walk all the way over there. There's one more tipped over. I just want to show you how nice this is unveiled. Did you hear that? It is ready. Two days of drying. That's pretty good. It would have been drying a lot better if we wouldn't have had the clouds we had yesterday. And with these clouds, yeah, there's too much moisture in the air. So It's never a rush job. It's always slow going on this old equipment. Sounds like he's headed back up the hill. I think he was on his last row. He might be heading back to go get the stack wagon. So I messaged him. He's back parking the baler to go pick up the stack wagon. His bale counter says 211 bales. Now we replaced that counter a couple of years ago and I think it's just a tractor supply, maybe their Schmidt brand. Um, has been off every single time that we've done it. It's never been right on. I think it's usually a few bales lighter than what it reads. So with 211, um, we are going to have to add a couple for a second load with the stack wagon or take some off the top um, from the pile that you dump first to complete the load so that you can dump it um, automatically without having to do any manual unloading because it's complicated that way. So you can see I rode my bike. I am going to ride my bike back. This is yeah, a quarter of a mile from the house. So I get a little bit of exercise and I'll work off my lunch that I have. So that's the first load. And this is what I was talking about with the stack wagon video. Oh, we don't have the pushers on here. So we always have to do a little bit of manual unloading. This is on the extreme side of it. Usually there's like six. They're heavy. That's a bale from testing out the waterway. It's a much different kind of grass. All the same grass feed, just different soil so it grows differently. It grows um, skinny and wiry over there and it always yellows uh, pretty quick. So if you're gonna sell this one you have to sell them fast before they turn yellow. When you see that one was the one wet sitting in the baler. Better just to feed them to the cows. This is all soft green Horse quality hay. It is a beautiful. Okay. Good job, guys. All right. So we are 
nearly full in the bottom area of the barn over here. This was our third cutting and second cutting, the last of what we put in. But we're just gonna top off these here and we're gonna fill this all the way to the edge and we're gonna put new plastic over it, get this door back up, rebuild it, whatever we gotta do, and button it up.